In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 19, Part 3 March 19, 1926 How the Most Holy Will of God Eclipses Everything, Even Creation and Redemption, And Being Life of Everything, It Shall Produce Greater Fruits. I write only to obey and to fulfill the will of God alone. I was thinking to myself, my always lovable Jesus tells me many times that I must be the copy of my celestial mama and therefore embrace everything and make up for all to be able to impetrate the longed for fiat just as the Sovereign Queen impetrated the longed-for Redeemer. But how can I do this? She was holy, conceived without original sin. I, on the other hand, am one of the littlest and poorest creatures, conceived with original sin, like all the children of Adam, full of miseries and weaknesses. How then shall I be able to follow the flights of the Sovereign Lady in the Divine Volition in order to impetrate upon the earth the so longed for fiat that my sweet Jesus wants to reign? Now while I was thinking of this, my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior and clasping me tightly in his arms, told me, my daughter, my mama was conceived without original sin so that she might be able to impetrate the longed-for Redeemer, because it was right and decorous that not even the seed of guilt would ever have existence in the one who was to be my mother. She was to be the noblest, the holiest of all creatures, but of a divine nobility and of a holiness all similar to her Creator, that he might find in her so much grace and capacity as to be able to conceive the Holy of Holies, the Eternal Word. Many times creatures also do this, when having to keep precious things and of great value, they prepare most clear vases, and of a value 
equivalent to the precious things that are to be kept in them. On the other hand, if those are ordinary things and of little value, they prepare vases of clay and of very little value, nor do they have the care of keeping them under lock and key as they do with the most clear vase. Rather, they keep them exposed. So, from the preciousness of the vase and from the way it is kept, one can know whether the things contained in it are precious and of great value. Now, since I was to receive her blood in order to be conceived in her womb, it was right that both her soul and her body be most clear, and that she be enriched with all possible and imaginable graces, privileges, and prerogatives that God can give and the creature can receive. Now, my daughter, if all this happened in my dear mamma, because she was to make the longed-for Redeemer descend upon earth, to you also, since I have chosen you for the longed-for fiat, longed for by heaven and by the earth, longed for with great love and yearning by the very divinity, even more, longed for more by God than by men, I was to give you so much grace as not to place the knowledges pertaining to my will in a corrupted soul and body. And not only the knowledges, but the very life of my will that it was to form and carry out within you. Therefore making use of its power, even though it did not exempt you from original sin, with its power, it repressed the inclination to sin and stood firm over it, that it might not produce its corrupted effects. So in you, my will keeps original sin crushed and without life. This was right and necessary for the nobility, the decorum, and the sanctity of the Supreme Will. If any effects that are not good were present in you, my will would find shadows, fogs, and would not be able to spread its rays of truth like the sun in its full midday, and even less could it form in you the center of the carrying out of its divine life. Because my will is so clear and holy that it cannot be nor adapt itself to, living together with the slightest spot. On hearing this, trembling, I said, Jesus, what are you saying? Is all this possible? Yet I feel so miserable and little as to feel the need of you, of your assistance and of your presence to be able to continue to live. And you know to what a pitiful state I reduce myself when you deprive me of yourself. And Jesus interrupting my speaking added, my daughter do not be surprised. It is the sanctity of my will that requires it. What this is about is the greatest thing that exists in heaven and on earth. If in redemption I came to save man, now it is about rescuing my will in the creatures, and therefore making known the purpose of creation and of redemption, the goods that my will wants to give, the life it wants to form within each creature, and the rights that befit it, Therefore, placing a divine will in safety in the midst of creatures is the greatest thing, and my will, known and reigning, shall surpass the fruits of creation and of redemption. 
it shall be the crowning of my works and the triumph of our works. And if my will is not known, loved, and fulfilled, neither creation nor redemption shall obtain their full purpose and their complete fruit. Creation and redemption came out from within my omnipotent fiat and so that our glory may be complete, and the creature may receive all the effects and the goods that they contain, everything must return into our will. Now who can say how my poor mind swam in the immensity of the eternal will, and what I comprehended? But the point that impressed me the most was that the fiat was to surpass even the good of redemption, with the addition of a terrible reluctance to manifest what is written above, for fear that obedience would impose on me to write. Oh, how I would have wanted to keep silent! But with the fiat, one cannot argue, because in one way or another, the victory must always be its own. Then my sweet Jesus, always benign, coming back, told me, My daughter, it is necessary that you manifest this, not for yourself, but for the decorum and the sanctity that befit my will. Do you think that all the crafting I have done in your soul for forty years and more has been only for yourself and for the love I had and do have for you? Ah, oh, no, it has been, above all, for the decorum of that which befitted my will, so that in coming to reign in you, I would find my crafting, my incessant prayers inviting it to come, the throne of my works and of my pains on which it might dominate and form its dwelling, the light of its very knowledge so that it might find in you its honors and its very divine glory. Therefore, my many manifestations about the Supreme Will were necessary for the decency that befitted it. Now you must know that my will is greater and more endless than redemption itself. And what is greater always brings greater fruits and goods. My will is eternal in time and eternity. It had no beginning, nor shall it ever end. On the other hand, though being eternal in the divine mind, redemption had its beginning in time and was a product of the eternal will. So it was not redemption that gave life to the divine will, but it was my will that gave life to redemption. And whatever has the power to give life, by nature and by necessity, must become more fruitful than the one who has received life. But this is not all. In creation, the divinity issued from itself the shadows of its light, the shadows of its wisdom, of its power. It touched the whole creation lightly with its whole being. So the beauty, the harmony, the order, the love, the goodness of God that can be seen in the whole creation are divine similes shadows of the supreme majesty. On the other hand, my will, not a simile or a shadow of ours, came out into the field of creation as the life of all created things. And so it is life, foundation, support, vivification, and preservation of everything that came out of our creative hands. 
Therefore, everything is owed to the supreme will. My redemption itself bent its knees before it to implore that it would constitute itself life of each act, heartbeat, and suffering of mine, and even of my breathing, so as to let vital aids flow within the creatures in order to save them. My redemption can be called the tree, whose root is the divine will, and since it has produced the trunk, the branches, the leaves, the flowers of all the goods that are present in the church, it must therefore produce the fruit of life that the root of this tree contains. Moreover, the creation came out from ourselves with the only purpose that our will be known and loved more than life itself. And therefore, our will constituted itself life of everything, so as to be fulfilled. All the other things created by us, and even redemption itself, were given as aids, in order to facilitate our purpose. So if we do not obtain our primary purpose, how can we obtain our complete glory? And how can the creature receive the good established by us? Furthermore, creation, redemption, and the fiat voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven symbolize the sacrosanct trinity in fact, just as the divine persons are inseparable from one another, so these works are inseparable from one another. Each one gives the hand to the other. Each one helps the other. The triumph, the glory, belongs to all three of them. And since our will has held the primary place in all our works, creation and redemption remain eclipsed and as though dissolved within the immensity and the endlessness of the supreme will. Our will envelops everything and keeps the very things done by us as its throne from which it reigns and dominates. So, if our will is everything, why are you surprised that it shall produce greater fruits than our other works? And man shall receive that life that he has but does not know, because he keeps it as though compressed, drowned, weakened, while it moans and sighs because it wants to carry out its life, but it is not allowed to do so. Therefore, be attentive, because the knowledge of my will shall shake man and shall be like cement on the woodworm that original sin produced in the tree of the human generations, so that once the root has been strengthened, the creature may allow that life that she had rejected with so much ingratitude to live within herself. March 28, 1926 How, by living in the divine will, all goods are centralized within the soul. The primary purpose of redemption was the divine fiat. Having received Holy Communion, I was calling everyone, my Queen Mama, the Saints, the first man, Adam, with the retinue of all generations, up to the last man who shall come upon earth, and then all created things, so that altogether 
prostrate with me around Jesus. We might adore him, bless him, love him, so that nothing might be missing around Jesus of all the works that came out of his hands, not a heart that palpitates, nor a sun that shines, nor the vastness of the blue heavens studded with stars, nor the sea that murmurs, and not even the tiny little flower that gives off its fragrance. I wanted to centralize everything and everyone around Jesus, post, so that we might render him the honors due to him. His will made everything present to me as if everything were mine, and I wanted to give everything to Jesus. Now, while I was doing this, it seemed to me that Jesus was happy in looking at all generations and all of his things around himself. And clasping me to himself, he told me, My daughter, how content I am in seeing all of my works around me. I feel I am given back the joy and the happiness that I gave them in creating them and I repay them with new happiness. This is the great good that my will contains and brings, and in the one who lives in it, it centralizes the goods of all, because there is no good that my will does not bring, and it binds the soul to everyone and to everything that belongs to it. So, if the creature had not withdrawn from my will, I would have found everyone within each one, and each one in everyone. The goods, the light, the strength, the science, the love, the beauty, were to be common to all. There was to be neither yours nor mine both in the natural and in the spiritual order. Each one could have taken as much as he wanted. The human life in my will was to be symbolized by the sun. Everyone can take its light as much as they want of it without anyone lacking it. However, as man withdrew from my will, the goods, the light, the strength, the love, the beauty, remained divided and as though halved among creatures. Therefore, there was no more order, nor harmony, nor true love, either toward God or among themselves. Oh, if the sun could be divided into many rays, these solar rays, detaching from the center of light, would end up becoming darkness. And what would happen to the earth? Ah, indeed, no one could ever again have a light of his own, and all for himself. So it was with my will. By withdrawing from it, man lost the fullness of goods, the fullness of light, of strength, of beauty, and so forth. And therefore he was forced to live a life of hardships. Therefore, be attentive. Let your living in my will be continuous that you may contain everything, and I may find everything in you. Then I was thinking to myself, if the true living in the supreme will contains so much good, why did my celestial mamma, who was all will of God, not impetrate the fiat voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven? together with the longed-for Redeemer, 
so as to let man return into that supreme fiat from which he came, to give back to him all the goods and the purpose for which he had been created. More so, since being all will of God, she had no nourishment extraneous to God. Therefore she possessed the very divine power, and with it she could impetrate everything. And my sweet Jesus, moving again in my interior, sighing, added, My daughter, the primary purpose of all that my mamma did, and of all that I did in redemption, was that my fiat would reign upon her. It would not have been decorous, nor a true love, nor a great magnanimity, and even less an operating worthy of the God that I was, if in coming into the world I had given and wanted to give to creatures the smaller thing, that was the means to be saved, but not the greater one that was my will, that contains not only the remedies, but all possible goods that exist in heaven and on earth, and not only salvation and sanctity, but that sanctity that raises them to the very sanctity of their Creator. Oh, if you could penetrate into each prayer, act, word, and pain of my inseparable Mama, you would find in them the fiat that she longed for and impetrated. If you could penetrate into each drop of my blood, into each one of my heartbeats, breaths, steps, works, sorrows, and tears, you would find the fiat having primacy in them that I longed and asked for, for creatures. But while the primary purpose was the fiat, my goodness had to descend to the secondary purpose and act almost like a teacher, who though possessing the highest sciences and being able to give noble and sublime lessons worthy of himself, since his students are all illiterate, has to lower himself to giving lessons in ABC, to then be able to reach, little by little, his primary purpose of imparting the lessons in the science he possesses, to make of them as many teachers worthy of such a teacher. If this teacher did not want to lower himself to giving lessons in inferior studies, and wanted to give lessons in his high science, the students, being illiterate, would not understand him, and confounded by such a great science that they ignored, would leave him. And the poor teacher, by not wanting to lower himself, would give neither the small good nor the great good of his science. Now, my daughter, when I came upon earth, creatures were all illiterate in the things of heaven. And if I had wanted to speak about the fiat and of the true living in it, they would have been incapable of comprehending. Since they did not know the way to come to me, the majority of them being crippled, blind, sick, I had to lower myself within the guise of my humanity that covered that fiat that I wanted to give, becoming their brother, associating with everyone, to be able to teach the first rudiments, the ABC of the supreme fiat, and everything I taught did and suffered, was nothing but preparing the way, the kingdom, and the dominion of my will. 
This is the usual way of our works, to do minor things as a preparatory act for greater things. Did I not do the same with you? At the beginning, I certainly did not speak to you about the supreme fiat or about the height, the sanctity that I wanted you to reach in my will. Nor did I ever mention the greater mission to which I was calling you. Rather, I kept you like a little child to whom I delighted in teaching obedience, love of suffering, detachment from everyone, death to your own self. And as you corresponded, I rejoiced because I could see, prepared in you, the place in which to put my fiat and the sublime lessons that pertained to my will. The same happened in redemption. Everything was done for the purpose that the fiat might reign again in the creature, just as when we issued him from our creative hands. We have no hurry in our works, because we have not only the centuries, but all eternity at our disposal. Therefore we proceed at a slow pace. But for our own triumph, first we prepare, and then we act. Nor do I have less power after returning to heaven than I would have if I continued to be on earth. My power is always the same, whether I am in heaven or on earth. Did I not call and choose my mama while being in my celestial fatherland? In the same way, I have called and chosen you for the longed-for fiat with the same power that no one can resist. Even more, I tell you th that in order to obtain this, you have at your disposal greater and more important things than my beloved mamma did. Therefore, you are more fortunate because she did not have a mamma nor her works as help in order to obtain the longed for redeemer, but she had only the cortege of the acts of the prophets, the patriarchs, and the good of the Old Testament, and of the great foreseen goods of the future Redeemer. You, on the other hand, have a mamma and all of her works as help. You have the helps, the pains, the prayers, and the very life, not foreseen, but carried out, of your Redeemer. There are no goods nor prayers that have been done and are being done in the church that are not with you to help you to obtain the longed for fiat. Since the primary purpose of all that was done by me, by the Queen of Heaven, and by all the good was the fulfillment of my will, everything is with you to impetrate the realization of their purpose. Therefore, be attentive. I shall always be with you, and so shall my mamma. You shall not be alone in longing for the triumph of our will. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 19, Part 3 Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.